This is my old not for hire rig. That's correct. This truck is not for hire. Hey guys, wanted to touch on a topic. I did a video a while back and um, someone commented that uh, the video was, was regarding not for hire carriers. And someone commented on the video that if you're getting compensation, you're for hire. It's not how that works. Um, for hire means I'm transporting somebody else's property. If you're transporting your own, you're not for hire. Um, and it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. You're, you're a business, yes. You're being compensated, yes. But you're not for hire because you're not transporting somebody else's property. And a lot of people have the misconception and think that not for hire means you're somehow exempt from FMCSA rules, that you don't need a CDL, that you don't need permits. Not true. If you're not a commercial enterprise, in some cases, that's true. And so if I have dirt bikes that are mine and I'm gonna take them to the desert and I have a vehicle that I use to move them and it's got a gooseneck, um, you know, and, and regardless to if it's a CDL required vehicle or not, that's personal use. Um, it's a hobby of mine. And, you know, compensation or not isn't for hire or not. So I use that vehicle to use, you know, for personal use. I, I load up, let's say, you know, a side-by-side, -side, a couple quads, and a couple dirt bikes, and, and it could be what would otherwise be regarded a commercial vehicle. Um, if I were to, well, let me finish that statement. So it's personal use. Um, I'm hauling a dirt bike, a couple quads, a side-by-side, -side, and they're on a gooseneck. Let's just say it's a 30-footer, two-axle, and for the sake of this conversation, because we're not really talking about CDL, we're talking about the the use of the vehicle. Let's just say it's a non-CDL setup. Um, that is personal use. It's not for hire, but more importantly, you're not a business or commercial enterprise. And so the correct phrase or term is not regulated. It's an unregulated combination being used for personal use. A The same combination of vehicle, let's just say it's an F-350 and it's got, you know, a lower GVW uh, gooseneck trailer behind it, um, California excluded. Let's not talk about California because their rules are a little bit different. But let's just say the combination of truck and trailer is not over 26,000 pounds, so it does not require a CDL. And so that same vehicle, if I was transporting the same exact equipment, let's just say it's one dirt bike, two quads, and a side-by-side, -side, if I am a dealership that buys and sells these, or I'm a rental business and I'm going to drag them out to let's just say Glamis or Pismo Beach or, you know, somewhere somewhere where I can rent these as a commercial um, enterprise, I am now a private carrier, not for hire. Yes, that's not for hire. It's my own property. That would be not for hire. So to operate that, and I know I used, I used, Pismo, which is in California, and, and that brings up the debate of California's different licensing laws. But just to say everything's created equal, we're only talking about the permits or the terminology of the carrier. So I'm a commercial enterprise because I rent this equipment. I am not for hire, but I'm still a carrier. I'm a commercial enterprise. I need a US DOT number. I do not need a motor carrier authority. I am not for hire. Same combination, same equipment, but 
now I am being paid to transport somebody else's property. Let's just say I am a trucking business and the same dealership or the same uh, rental company that rents these things out, let's say their truck broke down and they want me to transport it for them, now I am for hire. That's the difference. When you're for hire, you're transporting, you're being hired to transport someone else's property. All right, sorry about that, got a phone call. And so, okay, um, I left off with a, now I am transporting for someone else. Um, that's a for hire scenario. So if I am transporting the same equipment, the same truck, but now the the property on board belongs to someone else. Now I am for hire. Now you need the USDOT number and, and okay, and, and to keep everything equal, in all cases, we're crossing state lines, just so we don't confuse yet another um, facet or detail. In all cases, we're crossing state lines for the, for the sake of argument. So now I'm transporting someone else's equipment. Now I need a USDOT number and I need a motor carrier authority number or an MC number. That is for hire. And so the scenario and the reason for this particular video and, and why I keep bringing it up is in a lot of the groups, especially the hotshot groups, people in the hotshot industry and, and a lot of people in trucking, and, and I'm not trying to be mean, but even people that have been doing it for years and years and years, um, we all really learn details about given regulations when those legalities cross our path. And by that, I mean, we got issued a citation, we got taken out of service, you know, we had a cop tell us something. That's when we pull out the book and really try and read every single detail. And so... Believe it or not, there's people that have been doing this for 30, 40, 50 years, and they think not for hire means you're exempt from everything. And they think that there's no such thing as a not for hire carrier. Um, they think if you're being compensated, you're for hire. And, and the phrase, the term is being confused. And in the next clip, I kind of go into that. It is a little confusing the way it's worded. When you say not for hire, it says if you're being compensated, but the part that it's missing, and I show it in the next in the next question and answer in the clip, um, being compensated, yes, but you're being compensated to transport someone else's property. Those are the key words. Someone else's property. Um, in a Facebook post I put up a couple years ago, I used the term other people's property. And of course the song, the, the OPP song came to mind and everybody started putting phrases in from it. But anyways, maybe in the background I should be, you know, playing the da, 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 da. Anyways, all that aside, guys, not for hire on the side of your truck. I can tell you from, from conversations I've had with DOT officers, state enforcement officers is the correct term because DOT technically doesn't enforce on a state level, DOT doesn't enforce regulations. It's it's either state police, highway patrol, that kind of thing. DOT fixes the roads. That's just kind of what, that's, that's the truth in that regard also. Anyway, so I've had several of these officers, commercial vehicle enforcement officers, tell me that when they see not for hire on the side of the truck, it screams to them, this person does not know what they're talking about and they're probably doing something wrong. I'm gonna pull them over and take a look. Why? Because they probably believe if I put my not for hire sticker on there, I don't need my ELD, I can run in excessive hours of service, I don't need a CDL, and you know, if you're not for compensation, period, in other words, you're not a commercial enterprise hauling your own stuff, and you're not a motor carrier hauling someone else's stuff, the first example I gave, you know, it's me in my personal truck 
and I'm transporting my personal toys on a trailer, even though the combination may qualify as a commercial vehicle, um, I'm exempt from hours of service. I'm exempt from um, having to have a motor carrier authority. I'm exempt from having to have a US DOT number. I'm exempt from a whole bunch of things. But when you put that on your, your door, your window, whatever, and you're running a portion tags, that screams to a cop, you're probably running bootleg and you should be on the clock. That's what I've been told by several of them. And by several of them, that includes personal friends and relatives. I, I, I kind of hope one day I can get a buddy of mine. He um, He's a consultant. Uh, he's a retired... Um, He's a retired DOT, what you guys would call a DOT officer. In Texas, they call him Department of Public Safety. And he was a commercial vehicle enforcement officer. Um, he retired from there. Now he's a consultant. I'd like to try and get him on one day for some Q&A. Um, maybe after the channel hits 1,000 subscribers here and I can do live streams, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try and talk him into getting into it. Um, he obviously charges a fee. Um, but for me... We've we've kind of become more friends than anything else. I can shoot him a text and ask him, hey, bro, what's up with this? And he'll give me the answer and that kind of thing. Um, anyway, check out the next clip. I kind of take some screenshots from the FMCSA's website where I the, the question is asked and it gives you the answer. And hopefully that helps clear it up for some of you guys. Like I said, I've talked to people that have been in this business for longer than I have, and they are under the impression that not for hire means not being compensated whatsoever, and that's not the way it works. Putting not for hire on your door of your vehicle does not exclude you from everything. Um, in fact, if you put not for hire on the side of your vehicle and your uh, motor carrier profile, your, your MC150 does not reflect you're a private carrier, that is a violation unto itself. Look at your own authority and it'll say authorized for hire and then where all the little checks are of what you transport, there's there's a, a check for private property. That is a not for hire carrier. You check private property. My authorities, I have multiples, my authorities say for hire, the, the trucking business, says for hire and private property. Why? Because if I am hauling cargo on board that belongs to me, let's just say one of my trucks is moving another one of my trucks, or I loaded some equipment on a flatbed or something, that cargo doesn't belong to someone else. And so if I get pulled over and I get asked, where is your bill of lading? And I say, well, I don't have one. I just picked this up from my own yard. And then they look at my carrier profile. They can say, you're not a private carrier. Where is your bill of lading? Believe it or not, you can get other problems by putting the wrong thing on the side of your truck. And I know I'm starting to make this video a little bit long. Let's get to the clip. As always, thanks for watching. All right, guys. So this comes up very frequently in a lot of groups um let's just say you're hot shot guys so a guy just finished a load let's just say he's from phoenix arizona and he just dropped in los angeles so he's got like a six or seven hour drive back to phoenix and the question usually comes up hey I'm not under a load now, so I'm not for hire. Can I just pull my stickers off and go personal conveyance or unplug the ELD? And then some people say, well, I just carry a sticker that says not for hire and I throw it on my door and I just blow by the scales. So the question of what not for hire truly is comes up a lot. The problem is a lot of people think not for hire means not for compensation. And the problem there is in, in the description of 
you know, needing a motor carrier authority, they use the term for compensation. And it is worded in a confusing way where you could easily think one means the other, but not for hire. Um, not for hire basically means you cannot be hired to transport someone else's property. And so I owned a equipment rental company that was not for hire, but this business was regulated no differently than someone who has a motor carrier authority that operates for hire. And it gets confusing really, really quick. So let me kind of read from the FMCSA's website a couple screenshots I took. Let's start with what is an operating authority, aka an MC number, and who needs it? It says, in general, companies that do the following are required to have an interstate operating authority, an MC number, in addition to a US DOT number. So it says, operating as four hire carriers for a fee or other compensation. This is where it gets really confusing for a lot of people because they think that if you're a contractor that's going to charge you to bring a backhoe out to your home, let's say, and, and dig a trench so you can put in a septic line or whatever, they think that that's for hire, and it's not, and, and we'll get to that. But that's where the confusion really starts because it says for compensation, and it really should have the wording, but it doesn't, where it says you're hauling other people's property. Anyway, so let me move on. Um, transportation of pass passengers or arranging their transport in intrastate commerce. Transporting federally regulated commodities, arranging their transportation in interstate commerce. So it kind of leaves it a little vague, right? You think to yourself, if you're getting compensation, you're obviously for hire. And I get that confusion. I used to misunderstand it myself. So what is the definition of an authorized for hire carrier? This is more the nitty gritty. You have to take this in conjunction with the previous statement or answer to the question. So an authorized for hire motor carrier transports passengers, regulated property or household goods owned by others for compensation. That's the key, owned by others for compensation. If you are a for hire carrier, in addition to a US DOT number, you will also need to, op to obtain an operating authority, MC number. So the key phrase here is owned by others. So if it's a regulated commodity, and some commodities are not regulated. Um, I've been told like grain, wheat and a couple other items are not regulated. I don't remember where I read it. Um, and don't quote me on that. If I'm wrong, be my guest, correct me. I, I've not, I don't participate in that realm of the industry. So my understanding is a little vague on what's exempt. Therefore, um, I, I always say it to people, we become experts the minute the law crosses our path. And usually it crosses our path, <laughs> sadly, because we were written a citation. That's when we pull out the book and read every letter in, in every sentence and try and find our excuse or our way to get out of that citation, right? That's when we become, you know, immediate lawyers. So I've just said you only are a carrier for hire when you when you transport goods owned by others so then right now you're thinking well Miguel you know you're still a business you're still regulated correct let's go on to the next one what is a private motor carrier 
aka a not for hire carrier let's 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 go back to this one and it says an authorized for hire motor carrier transports um goods owned by others for compensation those are the key words now when you go to a private motor carrier now mind you a private motor carrier is still regulated by the FMCSA all parts of 395 you know hours of service all of that still applies to private motor carriers now mind you I have a private motor carrier authority and a for hire authority and an exempt authority and I guess we can touch on the exempt authority later but okay a private motor carrier transport transports its own cargo usually a part of a business that produces uses sells and or buys the cargo that is being hauled a private motor carrier transports its own goods and is required to have a US DOT number but does not need a operating authority or a motor carrier authority now having said that a private motor carrier is a not for hire motor carrier you cannot hire my not for hire carrier to transport your goods if if a private motor carrier such as my equipment rental business gets pulled up excuse me gets pulled over for inspection and they ask for documentation of the cargo here's where the problem comes in if I provide them a bill of lading where it shows I'm transporting somebody else's property you can get pulled out of service um, you're not authorized to, to transport for hire. It's, it's no different than if you're operating without any numbers at all. If you have on board property that belongs to you or the corporation, then you are still a private motor carrier, AKA not for hire. So another example would be an auto dealership that just purchased vehicles at a um, at an auction if that auto dealership owns their own truck and has a US DOT number they are perfectly legal to send their own truck over there pick up these cars and bring them back they do need a US DOT number it does need to be displayed on both sides no different than a for hire carrier that has an MC number the same regulations apply the driver has to have a CDL if this if the vehicle calls for it the driver has to have ELD if the situation calls for it or a logbook if they're outside of 150 air miles all of those things still apply there is no magic I'm gonna throw my not for hire sticker on here and be exempt from everything. Now, some people are gonna say, oh no, Miguel, you're misunderstanding it. Um, not for hire is what RVers use. RVers have adopted that phrase, especially the ones that use commercial vehicles like buses or you know, big rigs that you know they, they use to tow their recreational vehicles. They adopted that sign it technically does not apply to them technically they don't have to have any signage if you go out and purchase yourself you know one of these uh, Provost I'm probably mispronouncing it but the the big beautiful buses that have been converted to RVs um, you know the the two million dollar bus conversions like like your NASCAR guys and and you know these these rock stars roll in if it's owned by them individually and it's operated by them individually um, I, I got to see um, Dale Earnhardt Jr's um, RV once at an appearance he was making and he was driving it and so as long as it's owned by him 
and not a corporation and it's not being used other than to move him, you don't need any signage on that vehicle whatsoever. And in most states, he wouldn't even require to have a CDL. He doesn't need a not for hire um, sticker on it. Some people will put something like private coach, not for hire, just for the sake of not getting pulled over. And it's their opinion that they won't get pulled over with those stickers. The true phrase, not for hire, and how it applies to displaying it on the side of a vehicle actually comes from tow trucks. Tow trucks are required to have a little more signage than most of our for hire trucks or even not for hire trucks. Um, and the primary reason is tow trucks charge you when they operate on the highway they charge you by the mile and they charge you all the way back to their original um, office. And so if a tow truck moves your vehicle, let's say 200 feet just to get you off the highway, they have the right to charge you if they drove 100 miles to get to your location. Even if they only move you 200 feet, they can charge you by the mile from their original starting point, 100 miles, plus the 200 feet they move your vehicle, and then 100 miles back. And so to make this industry regulated and fair to the consumer that has a tow truck pull up and say, hey, I can move you off the highway, it's required that they have not only their business name, but their phone number and the city of origin of the truck. In other words, the city that it's operated out of. That is when the tow truck is for hire. They can avoid that additional signage, tow trucks can, if they are a private carrier. And right now you're asking yourself, Miguel, how in the world is a tow truck going to be a private carrier? Well, for example, the auto dealership that goes and picks up a vehicle from either another auto dealership or from a an auction they can operate as not for hire because they're going to own the vehicle when it's on board an auto dealership can also come pick up a client's car and this area gets a little gray but it's legit but they cannot charge for the towing so when you have like high-end dealerships i know there's a mercedes dealership in in the la area that they offer you for a period of time, free service on your vehicle, and they'll come tow it to the dealership for free. You don't got time to go deal with the dealership, no big deal. They send their, their, their low profile rollback to your place of business, home, whatever. They load your car, they bring it, they consider it complimentary, but we all know they're rolling that money into the service that they're gouging you on, right? Other examples would be like cars for causes. Cars for Causes is not for hire. You can't call them up and say, hey, my car just broke down on the turnpike. I need you to tow my vehicle to my house. What will you charge me? They could do the job for you as a favor, but they cannot charge you. When you donate a car to Cars for Causes, you turn over the title to them. They take possession of the vehicle. The vehicle becomes theirs. They are not for hire. So they don't have to put... Um, cars for causes, their phone number, and the city that the vehicle is based out of. They can get away with the regular signage, US DOT number, they don't require an MC, and the, the, you know, the, the corporate name, which will be cars for causes. And so other, other not for hire carriers would be, for example, a contractor that moves an excavator or a backhoe or any of his own equipment to a construction site. And this includes building materials because when they show up and pick it up from that supply house, it gets invoiced to them. So it's their property while it's on board. Are they being compensated? Yes. They're rolling that, that fee, if you will, into the price of building the home but when the property is on board, it is theirs. 
um, building supply houses can get away with the same thing, only many of them will get a for hire authority because they will, when they're slow, contract out and move other people's property. Other companies that, that could do this, and they have the option, they can go both ways. Um, companies like Walmart, where they have their own trucks. I know Walmart has, has an authority, so I imagine they may have their own authority um, because they may transport other people's stuff. Um, you know, companies like Home Depot, Lowe's, all of them can get away with, with not for hire if they choose to do so. Um, when I had my equipment rental business, I ran not for hire. And, you know, you want to ask yourself why? Well, a not for hire carrier is only required to have $300,000 in insurance coverage in California. <clears throat> my annual permit in California, I could have up to, I believe it was 20 vehicles, um, not for hire. Actually, I think it was up to 100 vehicles not for hire, and it costs $35 a year. If you're for hire in California, five vehicles cost you $250 per year. And so why would I give the state additional money when I don't transport anybody else's equipment? Plus, you have a higher insurance uh, requirement. And so many companies opt to do not for hire or a private authority for these reasons. Anyway, sorry my screen went blank there. I hadn't paid attention to the phone. Anyway, guys, I hope that kind of clears up um, some questions. It's, it's probably going to make more questions, and I'm going to get a whole bunch of people telling me, I've been doing this for X amount of years. If you're being compensated, you're for hire. It's, it's in the regulations, and to kind of recap, my equipment rental business was not for hire. Um, my trucking business that I'm moving freight with is for hire. And then I have a holding company, an LLC, that owns the trucks. It has its own US DOT number. It's exempt. It's completely exempt. I don't get um, audits. I'm not required to provide insurance, nothing. Why do you have that then? Um, that's the company that owns the vehicles and then I lease it to my authority and when things slow down, I take it off the authority, but I still have through, um, through the holding company, I still have plates and I'm legal to move the trucks from point A to point B. And if I decide I want to lease on to someone, I can lease them on to someone else the, the vehicles will still have plates, if the stickers, yada, yada, yada. And so you set that up as an exempt carrier, uh, even though you're not hauling exempt freight, when you do haul freight, you're leased onto someone else and it's completely legit. It's perfectly legal. A lot of bigger corporations do it that way. Um, it kind of protects, it protects the company a little bit, protects the assets, um, saves a lot on insurance. Many insurance companies, when you have a fleet as large as mine, when you start pulling fleet vehicles off, the insurance company wants to cancel you because they think you're parking them in the yard and then you're going to forget to put them on the policy and send the trucks out versus when you have them on a separate um, ownership, you end the lease and you turn, you turn in um, the lease agreement, you remove the... Um, you remove on your cab card who is responsible for the safety and you provide your insurance company proof of that. And so at that point, it's it's the equivalent to you've sold the vehicle and you can legitimately take it off the policy. I don't know if you guys have ever encountered that, but when, when your bigger fleet suddenly slows and you pull half the vehicles off, your insurance company is not at all comfortable with that. They, they start thinking that you're, you know, that your trucks are still sitting there and you're gonna start driving them and get into a wreck and their liability part, I know it sounds bizarre, but the liability part may still get sued on their part. Um, so let's just say truck number one is on the policy, truck number two was on the policy, I cancel its coverage. The problem is your company still has insurance 
And so if truck number two that's not on the policy goes out and wrecks, your insurance company can still be sued for the general liability side of it. And I know everyone's gonna disagree with me and say, no, that's not true. You may think it's not true, but trust me, the insurance company will get sued for it. You will too, but they're gonna come after the insurance company because they're the ones with the money. Typically, we don't have the money for that. Anyways, um, I probably created more questions for some of you than, than what I answered, but that is the definition of not for hire. That's how not for hire works. As always, thanks for watching, guys.